Okay, so a lot of people ask me, what's the deal about Gatorade, Dr. Rutledge? You're so annoying, constantly saying Gatorade, 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 you know, are you getting paid by the Gatorade company? And since this is going to be out on the internet uh, to the Gatorade company from Dr. Rutledge, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm here, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, my background is I went to the University of Florida undergraduate medical school and the inventor of Gatorade is a uh, nephrologist named Dr. Robert Cade and uh, he's passed now but he was my teacher and he would come and lecture to all of us new medical students and he told the story about how he invented uh, Gatorade and as I was saying a minute ago he was kind of a, almost to me an exact copy of Truman Capote. He was a little bit on the uh, is it fair to say height challenged side? And he was a little bit hair challenged, and uh, but very nice. But he had a high pitched uh, kind of a voice. And when he told us the story, he talked about how he had gone out with his team to collect sweat from the football team. He said we went out and saw the boys, and we took the the tongue depressors and scra scraped sweat off the boys. And uh, then we took the sweat back and analyzed the sweat and found out what the sweat was. And then we made up a big cup of s sweat for the boys to drink the next day, kind of putting back in what they had lost. And the boys drank it and they said, ooh, this tastes like pee. <laughs> they used different language for the story. but uh, And so we added sugar and that's Gatorade. So basically they found that in your sweat and in your body there's a certain amount of sodium and potassium and in contrast to what your endocrinologist said, the cells of the body have extremely high potassium and some sodium and the blood <coughs> has extremely high sodium and some potassium. And Gatorade is a match for sweat urine and blood, not an exact match for 90% of the body which is in the cells, but it's turned out to be a terrific advance. Now, when we grade medical advances, we could kind of give them a grade based on how many lives are saved. And you might say like uh, the invention of antibiotics and things like that have saved a lot of lives. If you look at Gatorade, if you look at what's in Gatorade, which is a little bit of sodium, a little bit of potassium, and a little bit of sugar, that solution and its development and our knowledge about it is so powerful that the number of lives saved may be greater in this decade for that mix of sugar and salt than any other medical development in the past century. The reason is that that same mix of a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sodium, and a little bit of potassium is also what makes up something called oral rehydration solution, abbreviated as ORS. And if you're into the illnesses that attack poor people, particularly in poor areas around the world, you'll know that the, one of the most devastating illnesses that kills lots of kids in particular in Africa and India and Asia and other places is something called cholera. Now cholera is a pretty simple illness. You have a bad bug called Vibrio cholera. It attaches to the lining of your gut and you start having bowel movements of such a great volume it's just as if you lost all your fluid. Now if you get cholera in the United States, people would put you in the hospital here, your doctor would, you, would admit you to the hospital, start an IV and we'd give you IV fluid and medicine to treat your cholera. In Bangladesh and India and other places, there's no IV, there's no free sterile IV fluid, there's no hospital, and so thousands, in fact millions of people die from cholera. And again, as I said, lots of times it's little kids. So what they found is if you analyze this fluid that's coming out in the diarrhea of a cholera victim, it's a lot like sweat 
it's a lot like your normal body fluids and you can save those little kids lives by giving them some of that fluid back to drink and they calculated how much sodium and potassium and sugar and they tried higher amounts and lower amounts and the best therapy that's life-saving and around the world saves little kids lives every day saving little kids lives this morning someplace else in the world is oral rehydration solution also Gatorade same thing now for our patients my patients do not have cholera but they have something like that we have in our patients short-circuited the gut so when you take a drink it falls out your bottom okay and that power of that short circuiting is so great early on that actually instead of being swollen with high blood pressure and swollen ankles and shortness of breath and things like that the surgery causes such a powerful change that you lose lots of fluid and many times you may become dehydrated just like a cholera victim so for my patients we recommend that you have as available oral rehydration solution which if you go to the local grocery store and ask the stock boy for ORS, they'll give you kind of a blank look. So we recommend Gatorade. Now, our patients need it especially early after surgery. They need it for days and weeks and sometimes months after surgery. And then you don't have to drink it constantly afterwards. Because I emphasize it so much early, sometimes people get confused and think I'm supposed to drink it constantly every day for the rest of my life, and that's not necessary. And in fact, the sugar in there, if you're drinking it and sipping it constantly a year from now, you may actually get dental caries or cavities and have trouble with your teeth. So we love Gatorade. We love Gatorade early. If a year from now you have to go on a hike in the desert, if you have to work outdoors in Las Vegas during the summer, which a lot of our patients do, then Gatorade is a tremendous resource for you. If on the other hand, like some of our patients, you work in the Henderson Police Department as a dispatcher, you don't have to be drinking Gatorade for the, every day for the rest of your life. But Gatorade is tremendously valuable, but not 100% necessary forever after surgery. So that's kind of the Gatorade story. Does that answer your question? What about G2? What about Propel? Are they good choices? No, they're not the end of the world, but you're much better off to have the original ORS. They've tried more and less, and so choosing G2 is a bad idea. It's not terrible, but it doesn't help you as much right now. Now, what about in a year from now, is G2 a good idea? Well, no, what we prefer a year from now is fresh squeezed orange juice or something healthy. So, um, and that gets back to another topic, which is kind of a sensitive issue with a lot of my patients, which is better, Coca-Cola or Diet Coke? <laughs> right answer, good people, all right. <laughs> Ooh. But let's pretend that you said, like a lot of my patients, oh, Diet Coke is better. How many drink diet foods or drink, di drink diet drinks, right? because they're supposed to help you because it makes sense. I want the taste, for example, right now just saying that, <laughs> I'd kind of like to have a Diet Coke. <laughs> Jennifer, could you, uh, uh, I, I, I'd like to have a Diet Coke. I, I want a Diet Coke. And, and actually show that diet sodas don't help you lose weight. In fact, you're right, at Purdue University and at other places, they gave mice either Diet Coke or Coca-Cola. And at the end of six months, which group, the Coca-Cola mice or the Diet Coke mice, were fatter? The Diet Coke. Diet Coke mice. One study, they put saccharin in the water. In other words, you just took one of an artificial sweetener with no calories, added it to the water of mice, and the mice in the next cage just got regular rat chow with regular water. Which group ended up fatter? The one with the saccharin. 
So patients of mine get all wound up. They look at me and... <sighs> so I'm not going to have the diet cookies. Are you saying I should have regular sugar? No. In other words, it doesn't mean that, oh, Dr. Rutley said Coca-Cola is good. I'm not saying that. It's like, you said I can't have cigarettes. You mean that I can smoke cigars? No. <laughs> Neither is good. We would like it to be good. In a perfect world in America, I believe what we would all like is to be able to eat a Twinkie and have a vitamin tablet, and that would be breakfast and would be good for us. <laughs> Not so much. So diet drinks. Taking Gatorade and converting it to a low calorie food makes sense. Get rid of the high fructose corn syrup that's now in regular Gatorade and put half as much sugar in it, call it G2. If you're drinking it for, for no good reason, then that makes sense. For us who are resuscitating our patient post-op, not so much. It's not bad, but it's just not as good as regular Gatorade for keeping you. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. And like you could have chosen instead of G2, you could have gotten Propel. Propel has very little or no sugar in it, just some artificial sweetener and a little bit of sodium and potassium, and you could do that, it's just not a good thing for resuscitating our cholera victim. What about diabetics, though, the sugar? Yeah, that theory. was my question. Will it throw you into a diabetic thing? Because you have these cavities at this point. Right. So, let's suppose you're diabetic and you have a choice between a Diet Coke or a Coke. Which should you have? Oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking here. I know, but oh. I, I was, I'm getting to yours because I was going to say something first. Oh, okay. But I'm coming back to your question. Okay. So if you have a choice between Diet Coke or Coca-Cola, which is better for a diabetic? Neither. I can't hear you. Neither. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> I said neither one. Okay. <laughs> so... Yeah, you're really hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have a Diet Coke with a candy bar, which is what I do, yeah, that's right. Yeah, a good choice. A lot of our, a lot of our patients. Yeah, this is my. What is the favorite meal for my patients at, at McDonald's when they drive through? I'll have a Big Mac, a large fries, and a Diet Coke because I'm watching my weight. Can I have a Diet Coke to go with a Big Mac because I'm watching my weight? And a large fries. Large fries, right? So, which is better, a Diet Coke? or a Coca-Cola? The answer correct is, you said exactly right, neither. Now, let's go back to your question about a diabetic. Is Gatorade a good choice for a diabetic? It is Gatorade being used in the diabetic to resuscitate them from cholera? Yeah, I suppose. If it is, then Gatorade becomes a good choice. Yeah. Are they drinking it for fun? Because in other words, um, uh, TV is on tonight, and I want to watch uh, Entertainment Tonight and see what's happening with uh, Michael Jackson's doctor who gave him propofol to put him to sleep. And I'm drinking something along with TV. Yeah. Okay? Neither Gatorade nor a low calorie Gatorade is a good choice yeah. for a diabetic. A diabetic with no sugar in it and with an artificial sweetener in it is probably going to harm that diabetic over time. I see. If I give people arsenic, yeah. they die. <laughs> arsenic was actually one of the first antibiotics invented right. at very low doses. Still not a great choice today. For our diabetics, healthy foods not, in my opinion, sweet foods with a fake out where they put artificial sweeteners in there. Now we like the idea of artificial sweeteners. The common sense idea is I want to eat a cupcake, but I don't want all that sugar because I know it's bad for my diabetes, so I'll get the dietetic cupcake. Yeah. And what I would say is I think the research is now pretty good. That doesn't give you a pass for your diabetes. The dietetic cupcake. I don't think helps you over the long term. And the research, I think, in, in mice and things like that is neither the cupcake or the diabetic or the dietetic artificially sweetened cupcake is a good idea. What they think is from this research is that when you fake out the brain, 
and say, here's some sweets, but no calories to go with it, the brain goes, <laughs> you can pay me now or you can pay me later, but I'm getting those calories and I want more. Should you drink Gatorade every day after my surgery? No. If you are a year after my surgery and you're going to go on a hike in the summer in Las Vegas, should you drink Gatorade? Absolutely great choice. You've got, a flu, you've got H1N1 flu bug after having an, an MGB and you have vomiting and diarrhea and upset stomach from a flu bug, is Gatorade a good choice? Life saving. Life saving. You just want to sit at home and have something to order when you go through the McDonald's, is Gatorade a good choice? No. Kind of subtle difference, but is that, is that kind of clear?